Hello, students. We have developed an expression for the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. There are other kinds of capacitors. There are other capacitor configurations or geometries. This one is called a cylindrical capacitor. And we are going to show that, uh, like in all capacitor geometries, the capacitance of this device depends only, well, it's, it's, um, it's decided upon by a manufacturer or by a client who hires a manufacturer to create capacitors of specific capacitances. And the manufacturers do that by uh, changing physical characteristics of the devices. So let's talk about how to find, how to generate expressions for a device's capacitance. We start with the idea, we start with the expression or the definition of capacitance, which is charge stored per unit potential difference. And well, for now, notice this is a cylindrical capacitor with a positive charge Q on an inside conductor, a negative, an equal and opposite negative charge, uh, negative Q on the outside conductor. So it's worth saying that this conductor's total charge is nothing, but that's not what we say about conductors. We say when there is some charge here and the opposite charge there, we call the amount of charge stored Q. All right, so um, what we need to find is the delta V from this location to that location. And that delta V, well, definitionally, this delta V is E dL. So what that means is we need to find the electric field created by this uh, this charge configuration. I'm sort of sketching that as field, field lines pointing away from that inner cylinder. Um, and guess what? We're inside that outer negative cylinder, so that doesn't create that the outside cylinder doesn't doesn't create a field in there. So we have to find that field, and the way we do that is via Gauss's law. All right. So Gauss's law. say E via Gauss's law. That's step one. So, oh boy, they're going to start the, the rock and roll club next door. Uh, you might hear some, some jamming. Um, okay, so let's, I'm going to just do a separate drawing of here's the inner conductor. Okay, it looks like this. It's got a, it's got a radius A. Uh, so here's a Gaussian surface of a radius R, and I'll say a, a length L, okay? And that encloses some charge that's located only in this area or on the surface, on that surface of the conductor, All right? So Gauss's law says the surface integral E dot dA is Q enclosed, whoops, over epsilon naught. Okay, so we're looking for E. We first have to get it to this. We have to turn that scalar product into a plain old product, or that dot product into a plain old product. And that means that, well, the only time this, the only place that this evaluates to that is where the E vectors and the dA vectors for our Gaussian surface are parallel. Here are dA vectors for some parts of our Gaussian surface, pointing out towards you, pointing this way, pointing that way. There are dA vectors from the lids, I'll call these things the lids, that look like that. Electric field vectors, like we said before, point radi, or I like to use the word axially away from this, from this cylinder. Those electric field vectors look like that, and like this, and like that, and you get it maybe, right? Um, so we have to be sure that we're only saying only this is only true e dot da turns into e da only for the lateral area of our Gaussian surface. And if you're taking the AP exam, you should say that for the lids of our Gaussian surface, da vectors are perpendicular to E vectors, and therefore 
E dot DA for those parts is zero. That's a requirement I've seen in some scoring guides. Oh my gosh, this, this, uh, I'm butchering this diagram, but I think you get it. Okay, so this is equal to Q enclosed. I'm going to call that sigma A enclosed, enclosed over epsilon naught. Okay, so let's hop down here. Well, E is constant along our Gaussian surface's lateral area, and the integral dA is the lateral surface area 2 pi r times r things height. Okay, area enclosed. That's this red area, right? So our Gaussian surface area is, is, is this area, but our charge enclosed, oh boy, our, oh boy, what happened? Our charge enclosed only exists on that, on this, on this red part. Okay, so that's sigma A of that part, and that area is 2 pi A L over epsilon naught. Okay, 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 okay. All right, we've got a field. We've got a field that varies with R as sigma A over epsilon naught R. And if we've done Gauss's law kinds of things, we should recognize that for a line of charge or a cylinder of charge, we get an inverse uh, relationship for field strength um, and radial position or axial position. Okay, so remember we've done this. That's number one, check. We find electric field. We do that too, so we can uh, delta V, well, via delta V, well, I'll just say delta V, find delta V um, between um, between conductors. All right, well, delta V is negative E dot DL. Uh, I am not including the negative because we don't care about the sign of the potential difference. It doesn't matter. Okay, so for us, the delta V from A to B is, well, from A to B, our field, sigma A over epsilon naught R, well, E dot DL, this, this, is, this DL means a little distance along the electric field vector. That is the, in the, uh, the uh, axial or DR outward direction. Okay, so that means delta V from A to B is sigma A over epsilon naught, one over R dr from A to B. Um, for reasons that I can't explain to you, uh, that integral, but many of you know at this stage, is ln of R evaluated from A to B. All right, so that's delta V, A to B, sigma A, epsilon naught. Thank you. Um, this is ln of B minus ln of A. The rules of natural logs or logarithms say that this is A epsilon naught ln of B minus A. Okay, good. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, yes, we found that because right now we can use definition. Now we say that definitionally capacitance is charge stored per unit delta V. And the charge stored for us is sigma, um, it's sigma area of that inner conductor over, all right, let's try this, uh, epsilon naught, wait, what now? Sigma A over epsilon naught ln B over A, ln 
over a. Good. Sigma doesn't matter. It better not. Now the area of our inner conductor. So so far we got the area of our inner conductor is two pi a l. And what I mean by l is look this l the length of the whole thing, the height of the whole thing, whatever you want to call it, as opposed to this little l, which is the Gaussian surface charge enclosed thing. Okay, divided by a ln b over a, and look what doesn't matter is, oh, wait, sorry. yeah, that does, I mean, it matters, but these cancel out. Okay, and we have an expression for this capacitor's capacitance, how about this, 2 pi epsilon naught, constant stuff, L over ln B over A. And like we said, a capacitor's capacitance depends on its physical characteristics. These are the radii of the inner and outer conductors. That's the length of the whole darn thing. And the rest of it's constant, or constants. Now, if I, if I wasn't clear enough, I've been in a bit of a rush, but if I wasn't clear enough, yeah, this, these B's and A's are, are, yeah, here they are. Inner radius A, outer radius B. Could have done a better job at that. Okay, but that's the process. Uh, regardless of what kind of capacitor you're trying to find the capacitance of, I mean, that's the definition. So it's a question of how do we define each of these things. The, the Q is going to be a sigma A always because capacitor uh, capacitors store charges on conductors. And conductors have surface charge only. And the question is, all right, how do you do delta V? Okay, well, first, we got to find E to do delta V. So that's, a, that's when we're going to use Gauss's law, right? And then we find the delta V via the definition. Yes, there's a negative here, like I said, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter for us. We want really the magnitude of the change in potential. Uh, and then, yep, and then we use definition of capacitance and simplify, and you will always find that capacitors, capacitances, uh, are, are dependent on how they're made, how, how quote, big they are and how far apart things are. Thanks, folks.